everyone, this is Miff, your life and performance coach, and welcome to the Actually You Can podcast. On this show, we discuss strategies for growth for ambitious individuals so you can spark and initiate your next evolution. You'll hear from inspiring guests who will share their journeys, challenges, and lessons learned. And I'll be sharing insights and actionable takeaways from my Aligned Results Framework that will help you to align your goals, mindset, and strategies to reach your highest potential. Be sure to hit subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to so you can easily find this podcast again and stay updated with new episodes dropping every week. Today, we're talking about building an authentic online brand with Hazel Uzdurk, a marketing and business coach who has helped numerous entrepreneurs scale their businesses sustainably to multi-six figures. We'll dive into the importance of authenticity in marketing, how to overcome mindset challenges when marketing your personal brand, and the key elements of creating an effective marketing strategy. Stay tuned to learn how to build a brand that truly resonates with your audience and drives business growth with ease and flow. Let's jump in. Thanks for jumping on today, Hayes. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And so today we're going to be talking about building an authentic online brand and you've been instrumental in supporting me to do exactly this. I've had the pleasure of getting to know you for just over a year now. And so for those who haven't yet had the pleasure of hearing you, are you please able to share a bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Well, thank you so much for saying that, first of all. So Hi, everyone. My name is Hazel. I am a marketing and business coach, and I've been in corporate marketing for 10 years before that. Um, And I help support ambitious entrepreneurs who are looking to scale to multi six figures and beyond using my self strategy systems framework. And you mentioned that you spent a number of years in corporate before going out and starting your own business. Are you able to share a bit about the time you spent in corporate, what you were doing there, and then more importantly, what led to the transition to what you're doing now? Yes, absolutely. So I worked in marketing for 10 years. I did a whole bunch of stuff, essentially, um, which will take me forever to get into, but I studied journalism. I fell into social media because at the time, uh, they social media was so new that they were hiring writers uh, to work for social media, and I was a good writer, and so ended up in social media. Um, and after that, I worked for advertising agencies, worked for Big Corp. At twenty five, I was the head of social at one of Australia's largest retailers, and worked in marketing with entrepreneurs, uh, small businesses, startups, all sorts of different businesses. And I got to a point where I was kind of, you know, I'd reached head of social, I was a marketing manager, and I just kind of got to a point where I imagined, I I love doing it and I love the challenge. I liked marketing, but I got to a point where I just imagined my career ahead of me. And I just thought, is it going to look like me going from business to business, like doing a similar thing? And I couldn't really imagine myself doing that long term especially because I really love a challenge and doing fun new things all the time. And I also felt like I was missing connecting with people one-to-one. So because I did work with such large brands, it was just millions of of people, right? And you don't get that connection uh, from from that meaningful connection from working with brands like that um, in the way that I wanted. So I took and I knew that of course like on top of all of that I wanted more freedom like I wanted to be able to travel the world and work on my own timelines and do something new every day and be more creative and just um, be my own boss and so I guess all of that got me to a place where I was like you know what like I've been doing this for long long enough now I can work for myself and I just kind of threw myself in the deep end and trusted that I could do it and gratefully it worked out. <laughs> And so you you made it sound so easy and then it was like a sort of flick of a light switch and there you have it, you have your own business. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of people love the idea of starting their own business, but it remains just that, an idea. Talk us through 
how you actually left corporate. What was that deciding moment? And then how did you start to build the business up to what it is today? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like this isn't going to be the most helpful thing for a lot of people to hear, I think. But for me, it was just, I just didn't want to do it anymore. You know, (laughs) I just was like, this isn't, it wasn't like a planned move for a long time. I just kind of thought, I want to do this. I'm I'm doing it. <laughs> I just trusted myself that I could figure it out. And I think um, I don't recommend this to to everybody. Of course, like just making sure that you can support yourself and that you know you're you're in a place where it's safe to do so. But I was in a point where you know I I had some savings. I felt like this is just something that I wanted to try. And so what I did was I just decided to, when I decided that I did want to fully commit to, to doing this, I reached, I, first of all, cause a lot of my background was in marketing and performance marketing and like running ads for people and ad strategy, that kind of thing. I, in social media, I reached out to basically everybody that I knew. And I was like, Hey, this is what I'm doing now. If you would like support with socials, like I'm here. Um, and some of my old bosses like reached out to me and they're like, yes, Hayes, we would absolutely love you to support us. So I did some freelance work for a little while. Um, and then I started posting on, well, I think before that I would have started posting on social regard with marketing content just for fun, just to see, just, I just wanted to see what would happen. Um, and like the, the idea of coaching had crossed my mind. But I, I kind of thought like, wow, that, that seems like a big dream, like that I could imagine myself doing freelance marketing. I could imagine myself having an, an agency in that kind of way. I could see that road because I'd done it for such a long time. But with the coaching, I just thought, wow, that, that would just be an absolute dream to be able to do that. Um, and it just seemed so wild. But when I did start posting content about marketing and giving advice and um, like entertaining the idea of coaching, I had people reach out to me and say like, Hey, can you help me with my marketing? Can you help me with my business? And I was like, yes, of course I can. Like I've been doing this for 10 years. I, I have the skill set to be able to support you. And so that's how it all started. And then my content really started doing really well. Um, I went viral multiple times and, um, I just began attracting I think through authentic marketing and my approach to marketing and what I've learned over so many years really helped me create a strategy that really worked for me and that I was able to teach to my clients as well. And then I eventually let the freelance work go and and transition to full-time coaching. Yeah. And you mentioned that it wouldn't necessarily be a path that you'd recommend to others. And I agree, like you need to have some level of safety. For some people, it does work. Just quit your job, go all in on yourself. And a lot of people can make that work. And there's some other people who might need to make it a slower transition. And I think what you did shows the incredible possibilities of when you go all in on yourself and after something that deeply uh, motivates you and you're deeply passionate about. You mentioned that you could no longer see yourself doing what you were doing. And so moving away from that pain more so to pursue something that could bring you even more joy. I think there's so much power in that. And I think just your story shows that there is the opportunity for people to do that in a career where you spend so much of your time and it takes up so much of your life. Um, there are alternatives to pursue happiness as well. And so I'd love to dig into a bit more about what you said around your marketing and what it means to be authentic. What does authenticity mean to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, before I get into that, I do want to touch on the, the, that my approach would not work for everybody. And I think like something to, that I want to acknowledge here as well is that I, my only responsibility was myself. You know, I don't have kids. I didn't, you know, I, I was at a place where I felt like I could really take care of myself in that moment. And so, and of course I wasn't starting a new business, uh, without knowing that I could support myself in knowing that I can do what I do. Do you know what I mean? Like I was a marketer for 10 years and then I continued doing marketing in a different way. So I think my approach would have been different if I had started a completely new career, for example. Um, So just wanted to note that as well. So in terms of authentic marketing and what that means to me, 
I think a lot of people think that authentic marketing means just be yourself, like just be you. But ultimately, I think what authentic marketing means to me is, yes, being yourself, but also being very clear on your values and your beliefs around the kind of business and the kind of personal brand that you have and being able to effectively communicate that to your ideal clients and really discovering what what motivates them and what their pain points are and being able to communicate with them effectively. And then on top of that, not just from an attraction standpoint, but also when those people are in your world being able to lead them through the sales process in a way that feels good and supportive rather than feeling salesy and manipulative. So I really see authentic marketing working from the attraction through to uh, engaging through to selling um, your, to your customers and to your clients. And Especially in the social media space, you, I feel like there's a number of different things that attract clients. Like people make entertaining reels or people have controversial opinions. What made you decide that your area of social media was going to be helping people to build authentic brands? What appeals to you about that? Yes, I love this question. Well, the reason why is because authentic marketing is it's a long-term game, right? So attraction so like creating funny reels or um having like big opinions about things can yes make you, help you make a big splash now and then but it's not going to help you build a sustainable business and so when you're marketing your business with an authentic marketing strategy that is what is going to help you give that longevity and build that trust with your audience and help them decide that you're the person to work with rather than and I'm, and you know, I'm not not saying that the other way is wrong either. It's just not, it's it's not the approach that I would take personally. Even though I have had you know content blow up and stuff, but I think that's not necessarily why the business has worked either. You know, I'd love if you wouldn't mind sharing a bit more about how you help people to create a business that feels authentic and help them to take that aligned action. You mentioned your framework at the start of the show. Are you able to share more about what that framework looks like? Yes. Yeah, so the framework that I teach my clients is called self-strategy systems. And so ultimately what that looks like is when I speak to self, I speak to internal and external self. So internal is the the mindset that you approach your business with and yourself with the mindset that's going to support you in growing your business so much of business is like holding a mirror up to yourself and seeing all of your stuff um come up because you you are the person that you work with all day long um and every part of your business and so you're going to realize some stuff about yourself and you're going to have to work through it um and so the mindset work is just so important And then the external self as well. So uh, what I mean by that is like your personal branding. How are you um, showcasing your identity online and using that to attract the right kind of people into your world? And then the strategy piece is essentially, you know, your, your business strategy, your marketing strategy, how we're going to get you from point A to point B. And then in terms of the systems, I am all about creating a business that feels really easeful and marketing yourself in a way that feels, um, you know, not like you're walking through the mud uh, in order to get everything done or feeling like you have a million balls in the air and can't decide which one to pick. So systems are a really important place to be able to build that sustainability and create those habits and um, automations, things like that to help support you while running a business. And so looking at the self element of that framework, you mentioned the internal and external self with the internal being around mindset. What are some common mindset challenges you see from uh, your clients who are trying to build the businesses that feel authentic? What are they struggling with? Mm -hmm. So some of the ones that, that pop up quite often are, there's a few. So sometimes it's, afraid to be seen 
uh, which, you know, when you're, when you're showing up on social media and it's maybe the first couple of times that you're doing that, or, you know, you're talking to your stories and it feels uncomfortable or you're making reels and it feels weird to do that. Um, and having that, that thought of like, who am I to be doing this? Who am I to be taking selfies and showing myself on stories or, you know, that, that feeling comes up a lot. And, um, that's definitely something that I've supported a lot of clients with and, also being okay to be loud and to be heard is another big one. Mm -hmm. uh, like being able to trust your voice and what you have to say. Say those are the two ones that are jumping up to me the most in this moment that I can recall of being like the biggest mindset shifts, but also like um, money, you know, being able to hold more money. Like when you're starting out, it's, can I, can I do this in the first place? And when you're further along some of my clients who are making multi six figures, it's like, can I hold more money? And how do I, how do I hold that? Do I deserve it? Is money is for, you know, is, is for bad people or money, having money is greedy. You know, there's a lot of beliefs around that as well. So it's really interesting to see how much mindset stuff can come up with marketing and business. 100%, especially when it's a business and it doesn't necessarily have to be a service-based business. I think if you're marketing a product, you can always hide behind a product or hide behind a brand. But when mm. you're marketing your own personal services, the afraid to be seen, afraid to be heard or be loud, I can definitely see those coming through. Um, and I'm interested to hear, if you wouldn't mind sharing, how you support clients to move through that? Because I know you've done that very successfully. You've definitely supported me with some um, mindset challenges I'd love for you to share with the audience a bit more about that mm -hmm. so in terms of I mean it depends so much on the client right like my advice would be so different depending on who it was mm -hmm. and their current like their situation and what I thought it was stemming from like a lot of it is down to like mm -hmm. where is this belief coming from in the first place and I think one of if I were to to kind of imagine a more like general approach to it, I think my my biggest advice would be in terms of being seen, the afraid of being seen and afraid of showing up. Like a lot of people have a fear of like, what will my friends think or what will my family think or um, what will my colleagues think? And I think like when when that thought spiral starts happening, like just remembering that those people are often not your target demographic. Like we're not trying to uh to to retract those people we're trying to retract your people so remembering that strategically is helpful and I think also just remembering that your your voice and the way that you think about things is your magic and when you tap into that that is what is going to attract your people and when you when you don't share that it's like you're you're dimming your own light and it's you won't be able to reach those other people because you're not you're not being loud enough to reach them and so when you are loud you're giving them the gift of your support you know and your the real, being in relationship with them yeah and I, I love what you say right by sharing that you're not sharing your magic and I think you really empower people I know you've done this for, like, for me to share their voice um, we all have such beautifully unique gifts. And I think we all sometimes need that little boost of confidence or someone in our corner just saying, yes, you have value to offer and it's okay to share that with people. And I also love what you shared about the feedback that you can receive from people who are close to you and especially family. It's our innate human nature to want to feel supported and safe in our family tribe. And mm. again, if they are sharing opinions that, um, they're not aligned to what you want to do, remembering that they aren't your target audience. Yes, it's completely normal to want to feel loved and accepted by them, but if they're not the people that you want to attract to stay in clients, then it's like, thank you for your opinion. I'm choosing to continue forward with this because I'm on a greater mission. <laughs> yeah. And I think also like your, I, I know I've had clients who have felt like their family hasn't supported them or their friends haven't supported them in their businesses. And I know that that's, that's hard. Like that's a hard thing to navigate. And so mm -hmm. I, I can have complete, you know, empathy for people who are in that situation. And I think like setting those boundaries of like, this is something that's really important to me and your support would really mean the world to me. And so, um, 
you know, and if, if they're not giving that, then, you know, you can just quietly mute them on Instagram or <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but yeah. And then in terms of like, um, uh, owning, owning your magic, like, thank you for saying that I've supported you in doing that. That makes me really happy. And I think like something to keep in mind with that is I think, um, a lot of people when they're promoting their businesses or when they're, they're beginning to market themselves more and they're getting some more visibility, it starts getting a bit scary because you're like, oh, people are listening now, you know? And I think um, just remembering that you don't need to do anything to earn the right to be loud and to be heard, that you are inherently worthy of being seen and being heard exactly as you are. And that's, that's what's going to attract your people your way. So beautiful. I really love that. Thank you. And you mentioned as well as part of the self element of your framework, the external self and a lot around personal branding. What are some, I don't want to say mistakes, but what are some things that people are doing that are negatively impacting their personal brand? Oh, okay. So I'm trying to think. So I think something that is helpful to remember is yes your personal brand is you like it is it is you and if you are a person and you have a service based business then you have a personal brand you you just have one so but it's not necessarily just just you as you are all the time you know like if you're say say you don't for example if you were really into Hello Kitty, for example. I don't know why that's just popped into my mind, but you're like a marketing coach like me. Um, I probably wouldn't post about it like all the time, every single day. Um, and it, in, and forget to post about like actually content that brings you value or, um, you know, content that's going to support people. So I think like Bringing in personal elements of yourself can 100% be supportive in in growing your personal brand. Like absolutely do that. Not saying don't do that. But I'm also saying like remember that I'd say 80% would be giving value and showcasing, okay, what parts of myself as a brand do I want to stand for? Like what do I, what is my purpose of existing as a personal brand um, rather than like showing up like um, with all of your interests out there all the time. So I hope that was clear. I'm not saying don't take your interest, but more so like get really clear on the purpose of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yeah. I, I love the element of strategy there, right? And also for someone like me who struggles to, I guess, show myself on, online, it also gives me permission not to feel like I need to show every element of my life. You can still have some things that are just private and not just between you and whoever else needs to see them. You don't need to showcase your whole life on social media for someone to um, feel the authenticity or feel the the genuine interest in you. I'm interested on that note too. Uh, In the fitness space, it's really common to see a lot of people who are fitness influencers, which is people that take videos at the gym. They don't really perceivably add a lot of value out cuts. I don't know that sounds yeah. a bit rude, but I mean, when you're just showcasing videos of you <clears throat> working out in outfit, um, I'm, I, I start to see an immense value in that. What would you say to someone who's building a personal brand by simply just showing up and showing what they do day to day versus someone who's, I guess, trying to build a business and needs to be more strategic about it? What, what's the difference, I guess, if someone is trying to build a business and all they see is those fitness influences in this circumstance and thinking maybe it's just they need to be like that or they're successful. Yes. So we, the trap that sometimes some people can fall into is only posting one type of content. And so I don't view that, that kind of content as being inherently like the wrong kind of content, but it's more so we want to also, because that kind of content can be really inspirational to some people, right? So it's like, wow, they're working out. They look so great. They're so strong. They're so fit. Like that's can be inspiring to a lot of people. And that's great. That's going to help you get new followers. It's going to help you increase your reach potentially. Um, but what we also want to do is we want to create content that showcases your expertise and your authority in, in that field. So 
what that might look like is content that's more thought leadership type of content like um, this is why you should include uh, endurance training into your weekly workout routine, for example, like mm-hmm. giving giving value through your content and on top of that, making sure that you're you're selling and you're inviting people to actually work with you and build a community with you. So I think it's less about not posting certain types of content, but more about making sure that you're also giving lots of value and selling um, because that's what you're going to need to be able to make an income from your social. Yeah. And I love what you shared just then because it reminds me of, I think, the influence we think followers have. Like followers Mm. don't necessarily uh, indicate your selling potential. So you can have 10,000 followers who simply follow you for, as you mentioned, that inspirational content. Like you just go to the gym and people are inspired by that, but they would never buy a program off you. Or you can have Mm -hmm. people who have 3,000 followers who are super, super engaged and lack up every product that you buy. So I think that's, that's what I'm hearing, what you're sharing there. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of influencers out there who aren't making, who have millions of followers and aren't making money. Um, And so... I think like when, when a client comes to me and says, I want to get more followers or if a lead comes to me and, and they say that I want to get more followers, then the follow-up question is why? And the follow-up question to that is usually mm-hmm. we just need to increase your reach so that we can fill up your funnel so that we can work on converting those people. And so if someone's in that stage of their business now where they're going, hey, I need to just get more followers to fill my funnel walk if you wouldn't mind walking us through what a funnel looks like and what we really mean when we say we're trying to build out our funnel yes thank you for asking that question because i think the word funnel gets thrown around all the time and it sounds very confusing but it's not so essentially the way that i love a imagine funnel. it yeah love a funnel <laughs> so everyone has a different way of like describing what this looks like to them but I think the the way that I find to be most simple and most supportive to think about it in terms of content in, a, in an actual way is imagining like an upside down triangle and splitting it into three different sections. So with a hole at the bottom. And essentially, we want to be filling this funnel consistently. We want it to be an always on kind of funnel. So we want the first part of the funnel is uh, attraction. So like reaching new people. The the middle part of the funnel is like engaging them and warming them up. And the the smallest part, the end part of the funnel, is converting those people and turning them into customers. And so those people who you mentioned who might be only posting content that's uh, you know, content that's them working out would just be top of the funnel content. So they would be potentially growing their audience, reaching new people, but not necessarily converting them because they're not creating content for each phase of the funnel yeah that yeah, makes complete that makes sense and so, so therefore, therefore what would your recommendation be should we always be if our goal is selling so we're talking to mm. people who are looking to build online businesses should we should we be looking to do something at every stage of that funnel all the time or does it depend on the stage of the business what their thoughts on that yes we want to be doing everything all the time so when we just do one part of the funnel, <laughs> the <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> just everything all the time. <laughs> everything everywhere all at once all the time. Um so it doesn't have to be a lot, you know. If if the minimum of this looks like three posts a week and you're doing one post to reach lots of people, one post to build your engagement, one post to help sell your products, like that's enough of a place to start with. And then when you have the capacity and you've built up that system to create more, then then go ahead. So what that could look like is, you know, a also just want to mention like if you are just creating one type of content, what that's going to do is just work on one part of your funnel. Like if you're only posting sales content, you're not reaching new people. And so you're probably not going to make new sales because there's not new people coming into your world and you're not engaging them. You're just selling to them all the time. And that's, you know, we've been taught to sell. So that's not a bad thing, but it's just like acknowledging if you're doing that, then, okay, we need to add some more pieces um, of content that's going to support you through 
reaching people at different parts of their consumer journey. Um, or if you're only posting reach content, you're only going to be reaching new people, but you're not going to be converting them because you're not building that that expertise and that trust factor so that they can buy from you. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that did. Yeah, awesome. And I love that self is part of your framework and I think you do such a wonderful job in with your one-on-one clients on, on really making sure that self is the hero of this whole framework. And hmm. I would love for you to speak to, to why you've chosen to make self that first pillar in your framework. Yeah. So a few reasons. First of all, as a service-based business, your marketing relies so heavily on your personal brand that it's so important that you cement that and that is the foundation of everything that you talk through because your values, your beliefs and being able to effectively uh, communicate that is going to be such a core part of your marketing strategy because you want someone to come to your profile or any kind of marketing stand, any marketing point that you have and be like, that's the person that I want to work with. I connect with them. I can tell just by 30 seconds of looking at their Instagram account that they're my kind of person. So all I need to do after that is dive a bit deeper and then see, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I like what they're talking about. They seem like my kind of person. So personal branding is such an important part of this whole, the all of marketing in general. So that's one of the reasons why I chose self to be at the beginning. And from an internal perspective, I really believe that business growth comes from knowing yourself and knowing your mind and being able to understand like what what motivates you what drives you what are your values within your business and using that to fuel your business and help you through those moments where you get through stickiness or or parts of your business that you know don't feel good sometimes because they're going to happen Um, and so having that awareness and those tools to be able to support you is going to help you so much on your business journey, because, um, we can't just strategy ourselves out of everything. We're human beings. And so mindset is so important. Yeah. I think we're having this conversation earlier. It's like, I can't logic my way through this. I really need to (laughs) to take care of the human situation. Yeah. But moving on to the strategy, the area of your framework. What does that look like for you and how you work with your clients? How do you build out the right strategy for them? Yeah, so this really depends on where they're at in their business. So it's going to look different for every client. But basically what I do and what I do with all of my clients is I ask them so many questions, get really clear on where they're at in their business and then help guide them. I mean, yeah, I think any client, if if any of my clients are listening to this, they would laugh at that because um the questions are where you grow, you know, like the, the, your coach sometimes is going to make you feel uncomfortable and ask you questions that you don't want to answer. And if, if you're in a growth mindset, then I'd encourage you to lean into those questions and which, you know, most of my clients will. Um, and that's, that's where the growth happens. And so, yeah, I mean, ultimately I just get really familiar with my client's business and where they're at and their goals and why they want to achieve them. Um, and, and where the pain points are, you know, do they have a lot of time? Do they not have a lot of time? Do they have kids? Whatever it is and start building out a strategy on what and how they're going to achieve what they're going to achieve. So whether it's like mapping out, helping them map out their content or you know, planning out their next launch or their visibility strategy and just really helping them guide through that process. So they feel really clear on the next best step um, that they need to take. Because I think a lot of the time for entrepreneurs, one of the biggest struggles is like, I have so much to do, so much that I could possibly do, um, that it feels really difficult to choose the one thing to focus on next. And so that's where the strategy piece becomes really helpful mm-hmm. is being able to be like, okay, this is what I need to focus on. And I know that if I do this, that's what's going to help me get the results. And then of course, being able to take, take stock and be like, okay, let me look back at my strategy, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And then it will help you decide your next steps mm-hmm. as well, based on, based on the results. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's one thing I, I appreciate working with you as well is I think that's where the authenticity comes through, not only in the self and, and the branding and what you do feels authentic, but really the strategy is 
authentic for you as well. Like it, you, I mentioned, you mentioned, you asked the question, what does your situation look like? How much time can you spend? And so really your strategy is crafted to you. So it feels good for you. Not only does your brand feel good, your content feels good, but the way you go about it feels good as well. And I really appreciate that. Thanks for saying that. I think, um, I mean, none of us became entrepreneurs to, to, to create a business that's like someone else's, you know, like we want to create a business that actually feels good for us to be in. That's the reason why we chose, it's one of the reasons why we chose to be in business with ourselves is because we want to create a version of our life that we love living. And so um, I need to understand what that version is to be able to effectively support you. Yeah. And it's interesting because I think, I think like as you're talking through that, the words that came to mind was like, no one stopped a business because it's going to be easy like the people who start their own business know there's going to be some element and challenge there but in that you also get the reward I guess for being able to create in a way that suits you yeah I mean you get to choose your hard you know like what does hard look like for you which one are you choosing and then you know like for example masterclasses are a really great lead generation tool but some people hate doing them. And so I'm like, okay, let's not do them. Let's figure out another way that's going to help you get lead gen. But you know, if, if you love doing math, if you, if you still don't like doing masterclasses, but you know, it's going to support you and it aligns with your goals. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like let's choose this as your hard. And we're going to find a way to make this feel really easeful for you so that it can support you in your business. Cause we know it's going to, to help. And your hard could be the best fucking thing that you do for yourself. Um, Full disclosure, the reason this podcast exists is because of Hayes and this was my hard that I chose to take on at the start of this year and it's been one of the best things that I've done. So to your point, you get to choose your hard and I think that's worth remembering as well is, yes, starting your own business isn't easy, but you do have the ability to create in a way that feels good and choosing the challenges that you know are going to open up more potential or bring you closer to those two long-term goals as well. I know you've been through some growth stages in your business as well. Would you mind sharing with the audience what that your recent event was and how you that you chose that part, I guess, for yourself? <laughs> yes. So thanks. Thanks, first of all, for saying that about your podcast. Thank you. And I love what you've created and it's so beautiful. And I know that you're just affecting so many people. So just congratulating you so much on this podcast. It's incredible. So yeah, my recent hard was I ran a two-day online summit with six different industry experts and uh, this was definitely like a a new hard for me because I'd never done it before and I was I reached out to coaches and entrepreneurs who I thought were just doing incredible work in this space and people that I admire and um, they gratefully said yes to be involved and so I wanted to create something really incredible. I wanted to feel really proud of it. I wanted to serve my people. Like I feel like um, the the people in my community are so important to me and it was very important to me to be able to create a a summit where it really felt like you, they were able to learn and get a lot of value out of it. And then on top of that, because I was working with people that I admired and thought were doing such an incredible job in the space, I wanted to create something that they wanted to be a, a part of and wanted to feel like they were part of something special. And so that was my that was my heart. And the reason why I wanted to do it is because I, as I mentioned in the beginning, I, I don't really love doing the same thing over and over again. I wanted to try something new and challenge <laughs> myself. And I think a, a lot of what I credit um, – my success to and like getting to the point where I am now is doing things that make me feel really uncomfortable. And that definitely felt very uncomfortable for me to make. And my approach when it comes to things like this is strategically, I knew that it would be supportive for my business. And then from a mindset Mm -hmm. perspective, what supported me was I know that my biggest growth happens when I feel very uncomfortable and I just kind of metaphorically throw myself off the cliff and just I'm like fly um hence you know having my own job without having anything else lined up and the summit so um yeah I hope that answers your question but yeah that that was my heart and why I chose to do it 
Yeah. And I think think just hearing you talk about that, I mean, from from a client perspective to like working with someone who is still actively challenging themselves and trying new things and then who shares those learnings with you is so empowering as well. And I learned a lot by you choosing to go through that process. Um, not only as a participant in the summit and getting to benefit from all of the incredible speakers and the content that was shared there, but even just being someone who I'm I'm learning from and who's my mentor go through the process themselves. It it really inspires me to continue to choose my heart and create something that I love as well. Thanks so much for saying that, Miff. I really appreciate that. My pleasure. And last bit of your framework is the system element. And the first thing that comes to mind with systems nowadays to me is AI. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts on how AI, I guess in this case, is impacting authentic marketing. Because I'm not sure about you, but I've been around ChatGPT long enough to know when someone asks ChatGPT to write an Instagram post. There is a couple of words, a couple of keywords in there where I'm like, a human did not write this. <laughs> What's your thoughts on AI and the ability to keep authentic brand? Yes. Thank you for asking this question. And yes, absolutely. Like unlocking the secrets to or unleashing the power of like these are such chat, chat GPT words. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, I, I love AI. But I, I think that it's incredible. I think like the the amount of time that it can save is amazing. Um, I am really excited about what it can mean for us moving forward. And so I think it can be a really supportive tool. But I the way that I would recommend using it is by putting your own thought leadership in there and asking it to create content based on your voice and what you've already created, rather than using it to create thought leadership content for you, in which case you're going to risk sounding like everybody else. And that's going to, it's going to really hinder your, your thought leadership and that trust and that authenticity factor, because yeah, as you said, Miff, like a lot of people are starting to sound very similar and, um, and yeah, I do. I do believe that you can see when it's chat GPT. So use, use it, but infuse your own tone of voice into it and your own thought leadership into it would be my recommendation. Yeah, because it is a system that makes your life easier. Like I've used it for so many different things and I feel like it, it's here to stay and it's only going to get better. And it's not saying don't use it. It's like, this is how you can actually use it to improve your business and make things easier for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like you can do some really amazing things. Like if you put a whole email newsletter in there that you've written, you can pop it in there and it can create, you know, weeks worth of content for you or, um, you know, a a podcast episode description. Like there's just so much that it can do and to help you support you and save you time. But I think just like not relying on it to, to create valuable content or opinions for you. And also remembering that chat GPT specifically uh, it's only updated since 2021. So anything that you put in there is a little bit dated. So keeping that in mind as well. Yeah, I didn't know that. There you go. <laughs> and so what other, if you get businesses coming to you, I, I guess you get a whole variety of different clients at different stages of business, but what are some common systems that you implement that get them some immediate wins? Like I know, especially if people are new to marketing or new to business, We're doing things manually. We're learning a lot for the first time. What's some systems that you sort of implement straight off the bat with someone? Yeah, so I think, first of all, it can be something as simple as developing a content strategy and figuring out a way for them to be consistent with it. So, and figuring out what works for that person because not every system is going to work for everyone. And just knowing that when you cho- choose a system, you can change your mind um, because ultimately the system needs to work for you. You can't force the system onto yourself. Um, so just remembering that. But yeah, I think some some things that can be really supportive is like building out a content calendar that works for you and that helps you build consistency or mapping out, you know, this is how I like to create content. I like batch creating uh, different sections of myself. So for example, I have some, some clients who, when it comes to content creation, they really love um, 
batching it out based on the, the task at hand. So for example, it could look like uh, on Mondays, we I, we create ideas, we brainstorm. On Tuesdays, we write content. On Wednesdays, we record content. On Thursdays, we schedule the content. So like batching it out in that way and doing um, heaps of content in advance. But for some clients, that's way too rigid and they don't like that. So it could just look like, okay, how do we schedule in time for you? So every single day, maybe it's half an hour, we create a system that's like, this is when you look for audios. This is when we think about you know, an idea and they just like, like doing it on the fly. So, um, creating a system that works for you in terms of like content creation and then, um, even just like VA onboarding, what that looks like, um, for you and creating uh, operating procedures. Um, so like even something super simple that anyone can start doing now is just starting to write procedures of things that you do all the time so that when you do get to a point where you have a VA, then you already have those, those things in place and it's very easeful to bring them on board. Um, so those are a few examples of some systems that you could create, but there's so many. (laughs) Yeah. And what I'm hearing when you say systems as well, it's almost like, what are your business habits? Like what are the things that you do? What can you develop into habits? I should say, like, if something doesn't feel good for you, you're not going to stick to it. So it's when yes. you're creating systems, what, what system do you see yourself developing into a habit? I know we've gone back and forth with a couple of different ones for myself, but I think it's worth spending the time there because this is going to be sustaining your business. Yeah. And like automations as well. Like how do we, when I think about systems, I think about habits, I think about Mm -hmm. operating procedures and I think about automation. So like, um, for example, what is it, what does it look like when a client comes to your world, they book in a discovery call with you, for example, then what happens? What email do they get? Then what email do they get after that? And what, what does that automated process look Mm -hmm. like to help nurture them through to the next step? So Essentially, when I think about systems, I think about how can we make business feel more easeful for you and more like you can just rinse and repeat things without having to actively make a decision to do something all the time, which can be taxing on the brain. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And you shared such incredible shared value such through your framework. And I know I'm a byproduct of I'm that by- framework. And so I know it works. <laughs> and so I'd love to hear from you. What's a really actionable step, someone who is looking to build their online business to grow beyond those small to six figures. What's something that they can do in the next 24 to 48 hours to really start to move towards that in a way that feels authentic? I have so much in my brain right now, but I think what I'm being called to say in this moment is to, because there's so much that you can do at any given point, right? But I think what would be most supportive in terms of authentic marketing and and my systems, my framework would be do, this is going to be really annoying to people who don't like mindset work and to people who love it, they're going to be like, yes, I love this. <laughs> so what I would recommend doing is settling into a future self meditation, thinking about what you want your business to look like over the next six months or, or a year. And really imagining what that person looks like. What do they, what do they do? What's important to them? How do they spend their time? How do they serve their clients? And getting really clear on that. And then using that as your guide to show up authentically on social and begin to create content from that place where you imagine that you are that person and really just tapping into who you want to be and using that to attract your people would be my my recommendation that you can do in the next 24 hours that's incredible and I think it is something that a lot of people it's to your point some people go oh mindset work and I think if anyone, if that's your initial reaction, then she probably look into that because your mind, uh, your body follows what the mind says. And so you need to learn to love mindset where for at least be able to accept and understand the influence of it to be successful in business. We were speaking just before about how, I mean, I'm going through a period of time where my mindset challenges me a lot in how I show up in business, but your business is a mirror of you. 
and it's going to mm-hmm. reflect things back to you all the time. Your clients are going to reflect yeah. things back to you all the time. So to your point, it's having like a vision. really strong vision for your business and where you want it to go to help make sure make that sure when that all of this starts getting start reflected there. back to you, you have that really strong anchor to keep moving sure. towards. Yeah, and I think if ever you're feeling wobbly, like you're having mindset wobbles, the these these practices, if it's a future self meditation or if it's journaling for you, like whatever works for you, but just remembering that you you have the ability to choose how you show up in any given moment and you get to choose that all the time. And so when you create space to be able to tap into who that person is, it's allowing yourself the permission to to dream and then start choosing that next version of yourself. So when I when I first started my business, I did I do free self meditations like every single day, the same meditation over and over again. I journaled on who I wanted to be. I I felt I was just had this this feeling of like I'm just showing up as that person. Like it's going to happen, and and just really obnoxiously stubborn about it. And so <laughs> in my mind. And of course I had those wobbles of like, what if I don't do this and this isn't working or, you know, I need to do something differently, but just like anchoring in, anchoring in and trusting yourself that you can make it happen and that you're capable and you're safe in that decision. That's so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. that. Such a pleasure. And so if someone is interested to learn more about you and the incredible work that they do, where can they find you? Well, you can find me over at my podcast called The Self Makers Podcast. Myth was also on there. Uh, otherwise, you can find me at on Instagram on hey.hazel, and it's hazel with an A-L, not an E-L. Um, yeah, and that's, those, are the, those are the places that you can find me. I'd love for you to slide into my DMs and ask me any questions or anything that came up for you in this conversation. I'd be so keen to hear. Amazing. And I'll put those links in the show notes, but just be warned if you check out Hazel's podcast, be sure to be settling in for a binge watch. That's how I first learned about Hazel as I was listening to her speak. And then I was like 80 weeks deep into her Instagram and just learning all the things. Um, so settle in for a sesh, grab a beverage and, and tune in. Oh, thank you so much, Miff. And thank you so much for having me on here. I just adore you and I think you're so incredible and I love what you're doing here um so yeah thank you so much for having me and taking the time to 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 have me on and ask me these amazing questions thank you for joining me today for another episode of the actually you can podcast I so enjoy having you here and I hope you've taken away powerful insights and tools that will support you to achieve your high level results now before you go apply all of this wisdom in your life I'd be so grateful if you are able to leave us a podcast review on the platform that you're listening to or share this episode with a friend. Your support means that we can help more self-led, high-performing individuals just like you expand what's possible for them. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. So please go on and shoot me a note on socials and let me know what you think. You can find me on Instagram at Miff Galloway. Now, go ahead and make those dreams a reality because actually, you can.